Today I held the manager's briefing, which is an opportunity for me as the Chief Officer for West Midlands Ambulance Service to brief all of our managers, not just our operational managers, but indeed all the managers from PTS, Resilience, Heart, the Emergency Operations Centres and all of the corporate managers in the priorities that the Board have determined that we will be taking forward during this year 2016-17. But first of all, it gave me an opportunity to thank the managers and in particular to pass on my personal thanks to all of you, all of our staff, regardless of the role that you fulfil, regardless of where you are based, to say a really big thank you for everything that you've done for the Trust in the last 12 months. I know that we are busier now than we've ever been before. There are more competing priorities and greater expectations from the public and the broader NHS. Yet despite all of that, each of you, every day, do a truly outstanding job. I'm very proud of everything you do and I hope that all of you are proud of what you do each day but also the overwhelming achievements that you've been able to make, in particular over the last 12 months. And it's really those achievements and that success that allows us to build upon making further improvements. And it was those improvements, those priorities, that I've shared with our managers today. And I hope that this short video will provide an insight into what we'll be doing to support all of our staff do an even better job, that we can truly realise our ambition to continue to be the best ambulance service in our country and one of the best in NHS organisations in the world. This is really important for our patients. I'm very clear that everything we're trying to do is about providing the best support, the best equipment, the best training for all of you to be able to provide the very best care, world-class care, consistently with all of the patients with whom you come into contact. And to enable you to do that, we set out a number of years ago a very clear ambition to have a paramedic on every emergency ambulance and by Christmas we will have achieved that objective. The first ambulance service in our country that will have a paramedic on every ambulance, every day, on every community ambulance station and on every heart. That's a huge investment. And we only have now two types of emergency response. Our paramedic rapid response cars, of which we've more than halved over the last year, listening to staff, whereby we were too reliant on having too many response cars, we've reduced those and we've substantially increased the number of ambulances. And that's the second asset, an emergency, double, double crewed paramedic ambulance. We don't use the private sector or the voluntary sector or healthcare referrals or unqualified crews or BLS crews here in the West Midlands because we believe, I believe, that having a paramedic on every car, on every ambulance, every shift is absolutely the right thing to do. We've been relentless in driving forward that ambition as well as the rollout of the electronic patient record. The initial rollout in Staffordshire wasn't the best. We've listened to the comments and the feedback we've had from frontline staff We've improved the software. We have replaced all of those tablets. We now have the best tablets money can buy. It's cost us many millions of extra pounds worth of investment in that programme. And we're now busy rolling that out right across the West Midlands with a target date for full implementation by September this year. And coupled with that, the new Zoll ECG machine and defibrillator, the best technology available to support you to do deliver consistent high quality care. Again, a few years ago, we made a very firm commitment that we would have no frontline emergency ambulance or response car older than five years, and we've maintained that ambition. There are 51 new emergency ambulances en route to us now, the first which will start to come through in June, the last of which will be delivered over the summer. And because we've reduced the number of rapid response cars, we now have no response cars on the front line older than four years. No other ambulance service in our country has that level of investment in technology with the EPR, with the defibrillators and with the, and with the fleet. So we're making very substantial 
progress in relation to those areas, as well as increasing the frontline staff. Unfortunately, in the last few months, we have had to look very carefully and take some very difficult decisions given the financial squeeze on the NHS. But we've continued to increase the number of frontline staff, student paramedics and graduate paramedics. Last year, we recruited over 400 additional student and graduate paramedics will do the same this year. No other ambulance service are recruiting to that level and through that skill mix. Many other services recruiting ECAs or um, technician equivalents. Training is absolutely at the forefront of what we do, so we will continue to drive forward the um, progression training for technicians to become paramedics, student paramedics to complete their training, as well as two days mandatory training this year. Um, much of that has already started in the last few weeks. Day one will be complete by September and the second mandatory training day will be complete by March. But we're not complacent. We recognise that clinical supervision is crucial to support providing you with ongoing support and every member of staff will have their day scheduled with their named clinical team mentor over the next 11 months so those days will be complete by the end of March 2017 and by the end of May everybody will have the date and the name of their CTM whereby they will undertake that shift. We listened to the results of the staff survey, we were very clear, I was very clear that I wanted 95% of our staff to have their appraisal last year and we achieved that objective. But we also recognise there is some variability in the quality of those appraisals. And one of the sessions we provided with the managers today was some further uh, training to improve the quality of those appraisals. And all of the appraisals will be held with every member of staff individually between now and, and the end of the summer to ensure that we continue that programme of supporting our staff, listening to in ways in which we can make further improvements as we go as we go forward. Those things are really, really important to all of us. I'm also conscious that over the last 20 years or so, we've made very substantial progress in the mix of the staff that we employ. If I go back to when I first started in the ambulance service nearly 30 years ago, the overwhelming majority of frontline ambulance staff were men. There were a few ladies, but very, very few. Now we have pretty much a 50-50 mix between men and women. That's not true of the representative workforce um, within the ambulance sector across our country. The West Midlands is no different in relation to the communities that we serve. We're not able, for whatever reason, and I'm sure there are many, but we're simply not able to attract sufficient BME staff into our service to truly reflect the communities that we serve. And the board have made a very clear commitment and I'm hoping that everyone in the organisation will share our determination, as we have done previously with a whole raft of other programmes, in particular to having a better mix between men and women, whereby we will increase our current relatively low levels of BME uh, workforce to a workforce that is comparable with our communities, which is running at about 17% across the West Midlands. Obviously there are certain areas which is higher than that and other areas which are lower and we'll be taking steps over the next two years to substantially increase the numbers of BME uh, applicants to our organisation, the way in which we can embrace them into our service. And why is that important? Well the evidence su supports the assertion that where we have a more representative workforce, the quality of care that we're able to provide to our patients within their local communities will be further strengthened. So it's got to be a right, the right thing to do for our staff to better support our, our staff and also to provide even better services for patients and we'll be sharing further information about the steps that we'll be taking over the next couple of years. One of the other aspects we also covered today which is really important um, in the West Midlands as elsewhere in the country is the extent to which we are trained and equipped and exercised to be able to respond to a major emergency, whatever that emergency is. And I'm confident that the arrangements we have in place with the latest equipment, the new major incident vehicles that we have recently introduced, including 
the best ambulance service command vehicle that we have in the ambulance sector across our country, all of those are here in the West Midlands. We've made very substantial progress in relation to training for frontline staff, for our um, tactical and operational commanders, and indeed EOC and strategic commanders as well. But again, we're not complacent. We recognise that we need to constantly review the arrangements we have to look for opportunities to further improve them. And you'll be aware that we've recently reviewed our recall to duty arrangements and you will see on the public facing website a new tab that's available to all staff to be able to access in the event of a significant emergency and a declared major emergency and give you advice about how to recall for duty if you're available to do so and the actions that you should take for your particular uh, staff group should we declare a major emergency and require additional support from staff who happen to be off duty. So I'd encourage you to have a look at that and further information you'll find in today's weekly briefing. The final point I want to make is that a year ago we made a very firm commitment, I made an absolute commitment that we would resolve the pay banding issues in this ambulance service and although progress has been made both nationally to resolve the situation and locally, progress has been inadequate nationally um, and we need to conclude those arrangements here in the West Midlands. There will be a series of meetings over the next week or so where we will be able to finalise those details and then share with you the proposition that we think will help us provide a better reward package, increase the, start, the, the, the salaries of our staff in the service to reward you for what you do, to be able to attract and retain the very best ambulance staff here in the West Midlands and to maintain our position as being the best ambulance service in our country. Can I thank you very much for listening to this um, video. Thank you for what you do for patients every day and to please assure you of my continued full support as we continue to work through 1617. Thank you.